Short Stories Part 1 The word for world is ocean. Alicia She would orbit the blue supergiant together with the planet for a long time, even if he would exist only for a brief moment at a cosmic scale. The instrumentation of her ship would register when the blue supergiant would become active and send the ship back on travel. Would someone look into her and reface it again? He stood at the lock and saw the utter smoothness of the surface, a perfect symmetry shrouded in the glistening light of the blue supergiant that was reflected by her inner completeness. She was absolutely flat, nothing disturbed the absolute spherical shape, no sound was heard, not even his own breath. Routine awakening. The spaceship has flown its way, and yet something had happened. The automatic measuring instruments had recorded someone unusual. Already at the last waking up, he became aware of the blue supergiant at which the ship would fly past in, the re in a relatively short distance. The extreme radiation was not a problem, the ship was prevented from. Now, however, a single planet has disclosed, a pipsqueak compared to its star, but at the end a planet with the size of a substantial gas planet. She had exactly the density of water, one. The amazing thing, however, was that the measuring instruments could find only two elements, H and O, and the surface reflected 100% of the incident light with which the blue supergiant showered her, a perfect mirror. He took off the bulky, heavy spacesuit. It took a long time, had been difficult, but when it was done, he looked at his naked body in the metallic water of the planet. The smoothness of his skin, his long dark curly hair, the images on his skin that adorned the skin, the long gracile limbs. He knelt and a tear fell into the endless ocean to merge with her, without interfering the flatness of the metallic water, without causing a noise. Every 1000 years he was awakened for one day. He checked the ship and flew over the measuring instruments and the data which they had collected during the last 1,000 years. There would be nothing important. Should the measuring instruments record an indication of a habited planet, he would be awakened automatically and immediately, everything routine. Also, he was awakened only every 1,000 years for one day. He had become an old man, old, tired and lonely. Nobody would have thought that it could take so long. His hand touched the surface, plunged. The metallic water embraced his hand, enveloped his hand like a second skin. He pulled his hand back, slowly, completely untouched. He took some of the metallic water in his deep hand. She shaped a perfect sphere. When he opened his hand, the perfect sphere dissolves into an infinite number of infinite small perfect spheres, which in infinite slowness rush towards the endless ocean to unify with her silently. Arrived. The measuring instruments of the ship provided only senseless data. The whole planet consisted of water, no stratification, impossible, an endless ocean, the endless ocean. He had used his emergency codes to let the ship fly back to the blue supergiant. Now he sent the ship to one of the Langration points. He put on one of the special emergency spacesuits, boarded one of the shuttles and flew to the planet. His body, he let slide into the metallic water. She enveloped him and carried him in an ideal way. He no longer had gravity. It seemed like if he was a part of the planet now, a part of the endless ocean. A deep calm flowed through him. He began to swim. No wave come into being. No sound could be heard. He looked after the shuttle that silently arose to become a part of the blue supergiant. In the beginning, he had started to disconnect single stasis chambers only. Then, at each awakening more. The last time, 99,998 chambers at once. Now there were only two chambers that worked, two of one million. One was his. 
Now there was only him and the metallic water and the glistening light of the blue supergiant that enveloped everything. Well, if you have seen true light, then this is my prayer. Alicia. They all had no names. They would have given themselves in the new world, then, if they were arrived. He called her Alicia without profound reason. The name had come to his mind spontaneously when he saw her for the first time, when he stood for the first time in front of her, for the first time in front of her stasis chamber. Immediately he was under her spell, her face, an irreality of symmetry and harmony, an irreality of perfection, impossible, that it could give it in this purity. Later, always, his first way lead him to her. Her absolute perfection should be the first he saw. Bernd Norden You have studied metaphysic, I analytic philosophy. Why do I think I know you? Do not know me. Time had no meaning anymore for him. Past, present, future, undistinguishable. Too many doors he never opened. Too many passages which he did not take. Echoes. One single high tone fulfills the eternity. Shine on. He never will. The world of speculation around him. What might have been and what has been. Should he proud of, not to Holocaust in the name of mein Führer in Germany, or in the name of Allah in Syria, or in the name of God during the Crusades, because he not lived at his time at his places? Time, the only constant in the universe, with only one definite orientation, past is past, present is present, future is an indetermination determined by the present, which substantiates on the past. I do not agree with your third line, Elliot, and time future contained in time past. Should I call it a category mistake? Even Aristotle knew that the future into the great wide open. Will you, Elizabeth, promise me your rose garden? The word for world is hell. A director from Belarus or Ukraine, I have forgotten his name, sorry for that. His movie, German soldiers, a church, the villagers in. The soldiers shoot, and cheese, guns, laughter, then fire. I see different images. A church, inside, humans, inside. The lucky ones get shot, the not so lucky ones suffocate in smoke, the unlucky ones burn alive. The lucky ones have no time to squall. The not so lucky ones cannot squall. The unlucky ones? I hear their squalls. I hear the bells. I hear the tolling at a time between reality and dream. Bernd Norton, E. W. Grant, welcome to my universe. Bernd Norton, what does it mean? Norton, obviously a name. Browser, wow, T.S. Eliot, welcoming the universe, Miss Grant's universe. I love it every time, simply drowning in new music, but then also to think about it. I have studied Anglo-American literature, mainly beat generation and postmodern literature. T.S. Eliot, sure I know the name, never read anything, till now. It's wonderful to explore your music, all his fascinating discoveries, one, two, purple wig, Chandeliers and lavender, already discovery of such words, rewarding enough. Thank you. Thank you for your rose garden. Thank you. Surgery. Diagnosis. I look at my body. Something is wrong. I know it. Wikipedia pictures, no doubt. I've had it as a young boy at the other side. But today? Endoscopic, ambulant, local anesthesia. I relax, maybe not that grave. Look at the long scar at my left abdomen. At the doctors. Endoscopic, yes, but general anesthetic because of the risks and therefore hospital. I'm shocked. As a child, I was so often at hospitals. Appendix rupture, at least one time broken leg, 
two times broken arm and more. I have no memories except Katharine Hospital in Stuttgart. My milk teeth all demolished, my blood back to me. One picture, I see a young boy. He lies in a bed with grits on the sides, a woman. I see her as a silhouette only. She bends over. For sure, the young boy's mother. I become more and more confused. I have to wait one week till surgery, and it becomes more and more obvious I will die. I have finished my manuscript, have decided to publish it on a web page, to publish regard readings on YouTube. The web page is nearly finished, have problems with the translation, introduction. Two weeks, me two weeks by now, two weeks at least, and at least the web page is finished. Why now? I will not awake up from Anastasia. Hospital. I arrive early. The surgery will be this morning. I have some time to put my things away, but then the nurse tells me that it will take a bit longer. I lie in my bed and wait till the nurse comes again and I should change clothes. Everything is ready now. 12.45 p.m. She rolls the bag out of the room, operation department. I'm surprised, a double door system, something like a hatch in a kitchen. Why I'm surprised? I slide from the bed on pure metal. It's heated. I'm surprised again. It's wonderful. The nurse on the other side smiles. Do I smile? I have to slide again, although I would to love to. The nurse covers me with a white blanket, also heated. And again, it's a wonderful feeling while she rolls me into the anteroom. Anteroom operating theater. The nurse smiles, says something to me, or she sets an infusion and leaves, I'm alone, and it comes up. Only a short time, she will roll me in. I will offset in Anastasia, will never wake up again. I look at my A and start to cry, and then, then I hear this gorgeous voice. Everything is fine now. Leave it all behind. Let the ocean wash it away. With you there's only love, cause you're my religion. I feel so ashamed, crying and try to wipe down my tears, and the channel woman speaks to me. Everything's bright now. Even when the storms come, in the eye they'll stay. And all I hear is music like lay, lay, delay. With you there's only love, cause you're my religion. I'll panic that the nurse would return and see me crying. I try the best to get rid of my tears and to hide my feelings. I'm good in. But not this time. Nevertheless, I managed it. At least I hope so. As she comes back and rolls me in. The operation theater. It looks friendly. Another nurse. This should be a surgeon. Now they will narcotize me. Now I will die. Now I will... nothing. I have not realized that the infusion was not only an infusion, but it was a narcotic. Post-Anastasia care unit. I open my eyes, see the clock at the wall. 14.50 p.m. Nearly exact two hours. I feel nothing. A nurse looks at me, speaks with me. I answer. Do not know what she asks? Not know what I answer. Look at the clock. 1500 p.m. I search for an emotion. Not that, obviously, but... It's the strangest emotional state to whom I can remember. I feel nothing, absolutely nothing. I search for music, find none, not even the gentle woman. I think about the difference, the difference between to be dead and watching the clock too. I found no difference, both would be okay. I think about how easy, nice and gentle it's to be dead. How little life is worse for me, my life. And how awful it's to die. Now I know that I want to die in full conscious. I want to know it. I want to feel it. Not to shift into this other world, this emptiness as hero. I will cry back, weep like a little boy. 
I will, be I will be desperate, anxious, shattered, not because of what will come. What will come is the endless gentleness, but the price will be never to hear you again. But in the moment of death, I'm sure now, I will hear you all for a last time. Your wonderful voices, your wonderful words, all the wonderful melodies. 2.45 At home, finally. Heilbronn, Böckingen, football, cheerleader, baseball, burgers, hot dogs, coffee. Tackle, hit, safety, run, pitch, cheer. So many wonderful Saturdays and Sundays, but even this is the town in which I was born. I do not feel at home. Somewhere, let it be South Carolina, Maryland, Georgia, Mississippi, Rhode Island, or why not California. Somewhere, a small town, a field, players, cheerleader, marching band, anthem, at home, finally. Thank you for listening.